I'm Jeff Ratcliffe for the Pro Football Focus Fantasy Slam. This year's free agency market wasn't a particularly hot one for wide receivers, though we did see some moves go down that have the potential to impact the fantasy landscape in 2014. Two of the biggest wide receiver names in this year's crop had to have been Eric Decker and Hakeem Nix. Decker coming off a monster season with the Broncos, where he put up humongous numbers. Nix, well, not so much. But still, both of these names coming into this free agent market were the top names. And, you know, looking at where Decker signed, Eric Decker signed with the Jets. Now, this doesn't necessarily bode very positively for his fantasy value whatsoever. Coming from Peyton Manning in the prolific Broncos offense to the Jets offense with Michael Vick. Not really the best thing out there. And Decker's value almost certainly takes a hit. It's very tough to be a Decker owner in dynasty formats right now. I wouldn't be very confident with Decker as anything more than a wide receiver three. Now, Knicks, as I said, not necessarily coming off the best season. And there are rumors floating around that he sort of, quote unquote, tiptoed his way through this season so that he could make sure he was healthy enough to get a contract in free agency. Now, that being said, he does join the Colts here. He signed with the Colts, and this seemingly looks like a good fit. I mean, an up-and-coming offense with one of the brightest young stars, a quarterback in Andrew Luck, a team that can put the ball in the air, a team that can move the ball, uh, a potentially very good landing spot for Knicks. However, you have to be concerned with any player who's going to say that uh, they maybe didn't give 100% effort in the name of money. Now, even if these uh, rumors aren't true, we haven't seen it out of Knicks in 2011. So I have my concerns there, and I really wouldn't even want to trust Knicks as my wide receiver three. Maybe in that wide receiver four range, we do know he has potential to put up good numbers as we saw in 2011, so he might be worth a flyer at that point. Now, another name that we need to pay attention to is Julian Edelman, who did re-up with the New England Patriots after testing the market a little bit, didn't get any biters, and he is going to stay in that uh, Wes Welker-like role as Tom Brady's safety blanket underneath for those short and intermediate routes. Now, that was really good for Edelman last season, set up career highs and catches and yards. I mean, it was a great season all around. But ultimately, for fantasy purposes, in non-PPR formats, it's tough to really invest too much into Edelman. He's not going to be much more than maybe a borderline wide receiver two. I'd be more comfortable with him as my wide receiver three in those formats. Then again, though, if we go to PPR, his value certainly bumps up into the wide receiver two tier. From there, we have a bunch of other interesting signings. Perhaps topping the list uh, would have to be Emmanuel Sanders. Emmanuel Sanders signed with the Broncos. Now he's going to fill that spot vacated by Decker. And Sanders, we've seen some interesting things out of in the past. And we've seen a lot of upside, but we've also seen that he can't stay on the field. So if he can stay on the field in Denver, it's almost a lock that he'll be a wide receiver three, if not better. He lands in perhaps the best situation out of anybody, and he has a pretty high ceiling. He's a guy who a lot of people liked in the fantasy industry uh, initially in his first season, but it just hasn't come to fruition in Pittsburgh. It could very well come to fruition in Denver. A dream situation for Sanders, and I expect his, his draft stock to continue to rise throughout the offseason. Another really interesting name would be Golden Tate, who landed in Detroit. We know Detroit has a prolific offense, and we've seen a lot of numbers come out of Detroit. Now, we know Matthew Stafford only has eyes for Calvin Johnson, but he can move that ball around the field, and Golden Tate will get his opportunity to put up numbers. Now, with Golden Tate, though, we do have one thing. What I ultimately expect out of Golden Tate is he is a better football player than he has a fantasy option. Still, those who want to take a, a flyer on Tate, I, I couldn't, uh, you know, fall you for taking him as a wide receiver three, um, you know, or especially as your fourth wide receiver who could put up some wide receiver three numbers in that particular offense. A few other names out there to pay attention to: Brandon LaFell signing with the Patriots. He sounds it sounds like he's going to get every shot to be a starter in New England in that X receiver role. We know that Tom Brady isn't necessarily uh, the type of quarterback who's going to constantly bomb the ball down the field, but he will take some shots and LaFell has a lot of upside. We haven't seen him come to fruition with LaFell quite yet, but 
in that system, in that position, if he gets the starting job, he will have some fantasy value. Another name to, to throw out there, James Jones from the Packers, uh, signed with Oakland. And, you know, it's not uh, a great situation, but Oakland does have Matt Schaub in at quarterback now, and he will be able to get the ball around the field. So James Jones, a deeper name uh, in that wide receiver for, uh, you know, tier where you're going to want to add some depth, a capable receiver who can put up numbers. For Pro Football Focus, I'm Jeff Ratcliffe.